You can own the most expensive camera and film in cinematic mode, but it means nothing. Absolutely nothing. If your background is jank, and we're going to talk about it in depth on the pod because it is a problem, and I know how to fix it. Welcome to the Creators and Business Podcast, where we have a raw and authentic conversation about creating intentional media to grow our personal brands or business. I'm your host, DP Editor entrepreneur and unintentional part-time content creator Leia Lowe and in today's pod let's dive deep into what is distracting from your message so three weeks ago at the recording of this podcast probably four because it took me a while to get in here to record this but it's okay we're doing it we're here now we're making money moves okay um the recording of this podcast, Chris Williamson, who is the host of the Modern Wisdom Podcast, released a video on his YouTube channel going behind the scenes of one of his biggest productions for three or four interviews. I think it was four interviews. Um, he traveled to Austin, Texas to use a studio that created a background on these huge curved LED screens using Unreal Engine 5. If you don't know what Unreal Engine 5 is, I definitely recommend you to look it up because it's pretty freaking cool okay um but that's what he did that is what he did and he spent a lot of money he didn't tell us how much but he spent a lot of money okay you know now why now why would chris williamson invest so much money time and effort into the background and atmosphere for just four podcast episodes well apart from just wanting to separate himself from other profitable and famous podcast he knows that the background and the environment captured on camera adds to his message and not subtracts so think about good morning america the pat mcfee show and the pat's humble abode the thunderdome sports center with scott van pelp first take the herd with colin coherd as you can see i clearly watch more sports than i watch anything else on tv and good morning football can't forget Good morning football during the seasons and off seasons a little bit. All these shows have sets that match their brand that adds to their message and doesn't distract from it. So if you're a small business owner trying to market your business through content creation, the last thing you want to do is have your message lost because your background was distracting. First things first is you need to shoot in the corner of any room or space. So if you're filming your content in a small space, uh, you're going to need to film in the corner of that space because it gives your shot depth when you really, when there really isn't any, because the space is so small. Um, definitely my example is where I shoot some of my YouTube videos. Well, the majority of them, because while I haven't really shot any in here, I shot one and I think I'm shooting another one in here. Uh, Because obviously I need a bigger space. But anytime I'm doing like a talking head video where I just don't need that much space, a lot of the videos are going to be supplemented with B-roll. I tend to shoot it in my room. If anybody didn't know that, that was my room. And of course, my room is my room. I have my desk in the corner and I also have my bed in there too. And I have my TV. It's, it's It's a whole big old one space. So I have to make that space look bigger than it really is. And therefore, I chose one corner of the room on purpose to, and as a word, there's a technical way to say this, but let me try to put it in Leah's words. Because <laughs> Leah knows what she's doing, and Leah knows why she likes the way that it looks. But when Leah tries to explain it, it's a whole hosh posh mess, so I'm trying my best here. But your eye, shooting in the corner of the room, kind of drives your eye, because it's just these lines, <laughs> if you're watching the podcast. It just draws, it just gives it depth. (laughs) Look, it's one of those things like, I just know. It just gives it depth. And every time I go out on a shoot for commercial work and I come to a space trying to figure out how I'm going to light the space, how I'm going, where I'm going to set the talent and things like that to give it depth, to give it dimension, I'm looking for a corner, especially if it's a small space. Now, if it's not a small space, you know, it's a conference room, you know, it's it's a, uh, what are those places called? It's an entertainment um, venue or things like that where obviously there's plenty of depth, hallway, you know, practicals like pod lights in the ceilings. It's kind of leading lines. Then, of course, like I got depth for days. But when I'm in a, you know, someone's office at, at a, you know, 
at a um, what is it, a doctor's office, you know, like family practitioner or something like that. We're shooting in their office. I, I got work to do, and I'm gonna have to use a corner. And so I'm going to use the corner of that room, have those leaning lines, and make that, you know, give myself depth. You know, use the wider lens, have it closer. Maybe not too wide because sometimes, you know, the place doesn't look that great to have a wide lens. Like right now, I'm shooting at 50 millimeters in this space, even though it's it's pretty big. But I I didn't want you to see everything because, as you guys all know, from and at the LED panels video, if it's not out yet. It should be out where I show behind the scenes of pretty much what my set looks like. It's faux. It's fake. It's, it's a really small, it's a really small space, but it gives me this great background that you would never know is like super small because I'm intentionally using 50 millimeters, 50 millimeters, the lens. So you don't see all the other stuff that's around me and you just focus on the nice pretty part. You know, I was going to make a joke, but I won't do it. <laughs> I won't do it. I will not do it. And I have to stop laughing in the mic because I feel that feedback just, you know. So sorry, we're getting better, but we're not there yet, okay? So that's why you should film in the corner, especially if you have a small space because we're all about making depth, okay? And one just caveat that I definitely don't have in um, my, actually I do. So let me not go off the subject because I do that a lot and just go down a rabbit hole and nothing makes sense. So the second thing you want to do this is not in any particular order, just something that you need to do, is that you need to create depth whenever possible. Okay, so as I was saying, filming in a bigger space, you're gonna, you're gonna typically have depth, but here's the funny thing though, I see people film in a bigger space and not use that big space to their advantage, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're going to get far away from the wall as reasonably possible. So just example for this set right now here if you are watching this on youtube i ha can i touch it you see if you're watching it on youtube i gotta i gotta lean a little bit of ways to touch my background here and then i have my my desk i have my setup here and i think i would say the camera is probably about two three four feet away from me right but like I said, I'm shooting 50 millimeters. So fairly tight, little bit wide, but nifty 50. It's kind of a tight, tight, tight focal length. That's the word I want to shoot. So I've gotten clearly far away from the wall as possible because I want to create depth in my shot. And I'm telling you, it makes the biggest difference when people know or are, are aware of depth as an amateur, you know? Because at the end of the day, this podcast, this YouTube channel exists for business creators, business owners who want to create professional content for themselves until they can outsource it to a professional. Um, because obviously having a cinematographer come in or having a professional videographer follow you around costs a good bit of money. So why not figure out how to do this ourselves until we can go out and we can hire somebody to do it for us so that we can continue growing that bottom line. But I just want to say it's big, it's a big, 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 big deal. Creating depth in your shot because even with a cinema camera shooting in 24 frames per second, doubling your frame rate, having it in S log for high dynamic, high dan high dynamic range, um, even you know, adding color grade and things like that, doesn't matter. Doesn't look good if you, there's no depth in your shot. If there's no substance, no creative look in your shot. I mean, it looks good. It looks decent, right? But there's no creativity. There's something missing. And you probably can't put your, you know, finger on it. You can't put your, you know, you know, put a name to it. But that's really what it is, is the fact that you're missing depth in your shot um, when you don't use the space correctly. And if you feel like, dang, that's another thing I got to remember. There's another thing I got to keep up with. Maybe that's, that's entrepreneurship. That's running a business. There's always something. But hey, now you know and you can do better, look better. <laughs> Walmart. <laughs> so last but not least, don't shoot in front of a flat wall. Don't shoot in front of a wall in general, but especially a flat wall, if that makes sense. So I have seen this time and time again with 
entrepreneurs um, creating content for themselves uh, that not only do they shoot in front of a wall, but they shoot right against the wall. And I die a little inside. I do. I, 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 I die a little inside because I'm like, ooh, he. And it's, it's not even a, it's not even a, like, this idiot, you know, this dummy, you know, like, gym fails, like, that type of funky attitude. No, absolutely not. Never. It's always like, ooh. Ooh, you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. And you don't, and hey, I was there. I've done, I've, girl, if y'all, I'm going to do a video once in my life here in like 10 years. I'm going to, because I kept, I kept all of my, all of my content from, you know, 2015 when I picked up a camera and just started fooling around uh, in college and even the stuff that I did for marketing, for the marketing, sports marketing department in college, just looking at all the, sometimes it was like, sometimes it's like flashes of like brilliance, of greatness, right? It's like, dang, he knew a thing or two, right? You know, you had those moments. Like, he was born to do great things, right? But at the same time, though, it, um, I cringe. I cringe. It hurts me deeply. And what's so funny is, like, I was around people who were like, that looks so good. That looks so amazing. That looks, oh, my gosh. Like, that's, that looks so clean. That looks so clear. Whoa, what did, what did you do? Like, that, oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh, you're a filmmaker. You're a cinematographer. They didn't know that name then, but still. Like, that's, that's your, you're in your bag, bro. You're in your bag right now, bro. Yeah. And then I look back five years later. I was definitely not in my bag. I cringe so hard that I'm like, I can't believe I shared that with the world. But it's okay. You got to start somewhere. And I think there's also two is realizing that something's missing. That could be better. What's missing? What am I doing wrong and how can I fix it? And so that's, I just want to say that. I just want to put that out there that anytime I say anything, I give any advice, I promise you I'm giving you this advice because I was there. I done it. My content wasn't the greatest. My visuals weren't the greatest. My audio wasn't the cleanest and the crispest. But because I saw that there was something wrong, there was something off, and I wanted to look better and I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to figure it out. And I'm not going to stop until I figure it out is why my content looks the way that it does. And guess what? If you think this looks good, baby, it's going to look even better. Probably not, actually, when I think about it, just because at that point, I'm just shooting a movie, a mini movie. And that's that's a lot of work. So the only way that's going to look better is if I'm practicing something, some new technique that I learn in lighting, or I'm on a sound stage or something like that, which I maybe <laughs> we might do Chris Wills, you know, Chris Williamson's modern, you know, wisdom podcast type stuff where he had whole you know the whole led curve wall he even had some mist effects making people feel like they were in the rainforest do some crazy stuff maybe maybe because why not especially if i had the funds but still i just want to put that out there i want to put the caveat out there that i've been there i've done that my stuff looked not the best because i'm not gonna say trash okay even though i'm funny and i make jokes and i would totally say that to you in person that's me in person so you know that i'm obviously uh, a whole comedian out here and saying that yourself is like trash but seriously though for real, I've been there, I've done that, my stuff looked terrible, and now it looks better because I practice all the time. This right here, this podcast, is a form of me practicing and getting better because I can't wait around for these jobs to come. I want I want this to be like second nature, like breathing and waking up, and and so that's, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, and I want to save you money, the better Walmart. And I don't want you to feel like if you go out here and you buy a $4,000 cinema camera, you buy a $2,000 mirrorless camera, and you film your stuff, and you're like, this does not look like anything I thought it would or was promised that it would look like. But you do this thing where you talk yourself into it and be like, maybe it's just me because I did pay $2,000, I did pay $4,000, so it should look good and it does look good because, Lord, have mercy, have I seen creatives and that makes me die even more okay i who i i shed a tear when I, I i was watching the video on youtube this girl goes out and she buys this like 1200 hundred dollar mirrorless camera and it was like it was marketed and pushed to creators that wanted to step up their their content and he was like they both were they both were like this looks so good it looks so cinematic 
And I tell you, it was like the farthest thing from cinema. <laughs> Which is like, we, we use that word flippantly these days. And even I was like pushed that when I started. And now I'm like actually getting into cinematography. Like I'm bringing cinematography to marketing and advertisement and social media and things like that. I want it to look like a movie rather than just look professional. Like professional, great. It gets you there. It gets the job done. So now I'm teaching you how to make it look professional. But me, baby, we're we're going for cinema. We're going for textures and looks and things. And it was just so funny hearing that. And it was like no shade to them. It was just like, wow, like if you don't know no better, yeah, that looks cinematic. That looks crazy. You know, it looks crazy. <laughs> It was gas down, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, wow, no, it doesn't. But hey, you know, I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you like it. And that's what matters. That's what matters most. Because it gets the job done. She's, that person's still making more money than me. So <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> what do I know? So yeah, don't film. Don't film in front of a wall. Or just don't film in front of a wall. If you can help it, don't film in front of a wall. Unless it's like, like I'm looking right now here in the studio and let me explain it to you because I'm not putting my camera over there. 